What's up everyone, my name is Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to show you how I recreated the main bass from the Calcium remix of the song 404. This is what the original sounds like. Shake it! And this is what my recreation sounds like. All right, so I know the pattern is not exactly the same. I wasn't shooting for exactly the same pattern. I was mainly just going for an easy way to display the sound that sounds very similar to what's going on in that track. But we have these basic like rhythm drums in the background. But I'm just going to turn those off and I'm just gonna disregard them for right now. All right, what's really going on is we actually have four sounds here. The first one is the main one. The second one is the second version of the main one. Then we have a uh, sub bass, just going up and down. And then we have this background, like a uh, kind of juicy layer, which I'll show you how to make, but that's very important when layering these really hard, long basses. That's what's gonna keep the rhythm and it's really gonna fill out the space. All right, so to start out, this is the uh, main patch without any filtering and without any effects. This is just the wavetable. There's also no post-processing in FL Studio yet. But all this is is a thick and thin wavetable on uh, table position 109. I just found a really gnarly hard position right in there and turn it down a couple octaves. The next thing you do, and this is the most important part of the sound by far, it's turning on this Combs Plus filter. And what I'm doing is I'm using LFO1 right here that's going up in this shape on envelope mode. And I'm just like sliding this upward. Now you can totally hear how that's the sound that we're going for. That's what makes it sound so metallic and like harsh. I did have a little bit of trouble getting exactly the right spot on the Combs filter. Probably what uh, Calcium did is he just found the right, he just accidentally found a really good spot and it worked out really well for him. But in order for me to find the exact spot that he found, I had to use a couple of macros. See, I have macro uh, one here on this cutoff and macro two here also on this cutoff. And I just need to find, I just need to fine tune the right position. You see how these are just just up a little bit. I need to get it exactly the right position. So uh, you can get a bunch of really cool sounds not in that position, but for the recreation, I had to kind of do a little bit of detailed work to find, to find exactly the position that it goes to. So overall, this is not a very complex sound so far. We can just go right into the effects section. I have an EQ, which basically what this is doing is working with LFO1. You can see how I'm modulating the frequency and the Q factor up. They're both modulating upward. And that's basically, there's gonna be a low pass filter at the very beginning here, and then it's gonna slide up all the way up. So then there's no low pass filter. I did this because the transient, I thought was a little harsh and a little noisy. I wanted to smooth it out to just have it slide in a little bit more. After that, we have some distortion. This is soft clipping. You can see I have it on pre here. So I'm cutting out the bass before it's going into the soft clipper. And this honestly isn't doing much. It's just adding a little more power. I like to just as a habit, add a soft clipper to things like this because it will usually kind of richen up the harmonics. Next up, have a hyper dimension, nothing in the hyper. There's no mix and uh, the size all the way down to the dimension and the mix up about 40% to just get a little more width in there. Next up, we have a phaser. And what I'm doing here with the phaser is a very common thing that I like to do with uh, these sounds. I like to turn the rate, the depth and the frequency all the way down maybe bring, pull the feedback down a bit and then just mix it in because this is a really harsh sound you can hear right here versus this. It just adds a little bit of harshness and uh, crispness at the top end, almost like a guitar amp. Next up, we have a bit of a chorus right here, which you can see what I'm doing. I just have a low rate, low delays, uh, a high pass filter turned on so I don't uh, chorus any of the really lows. This is just a basic chorus sound that sounds like this. It's just a really spread out chorus and I can just mix it in. And then finally, at the end of the serum chain, we have the compressor, which I'm just driving through. I brought the threshold down very low. And uh, yeah, I think that's really all I did. All these bands look to be about pretty much normal. So it's just driving through a basic multiband compressor. Makes it very powerful now. Uh, going into the effects section right here, there honestly isn't too much drastic stuff that I did here either. If I turn this on, we can go through each one. First off, I have the EQ. 
it is cutting out all this low frequencies and really controlling these high frequencies, really shaping it. Next up, I have this stereo knob, which is adding a little bit of width. If you wanted to do this without this little stereo plugin, all you have to do is go like that, and that would be basically that. But I just like to see how much like the stereo spectrum is getting taken up. You can see how wide it is. After that, a bit of sound goodizer, which will add some compression, saturation, and a little bit more stereo width. Finally, I have this serum effects here, which you can hear the difference to what this is doing. This is the sound without serum effects. And this is with it. You can hear it's kind of pulsing up and down. And that is because I have this serum effects on note latch and this on off, so it's constantly running. And I have this shape going, controlling the low pass like frequency. You see it's kind of moving back and forth, but I have this knob all the way up. And this is going to add just a little bit of movement constantly throughout the track. So it's not a completely solid just robot uh, buzzing. It has a little bit of motion to it, which this isn't necessary. I just like to do it as a little extra. And the second version of the sound is also going through the exact same effect chain. And everything here is pretty much exactly the same, except that I changed the cutoff. You see, I didn't have quite as many macros here. I didn't have quite as much detailing. The cutoff is just different. That's the only thing that had to change. Now that's the only thing that had to change, but I did actually decide to do a little bit of different uh, different motion here with LFO one. You can see this is the first one. It kind of starts here and then slides up a little softer. This one was a little more direct. It came in a little faster and just zoomed right up. You can see. But overall, that's not a necessary change. That's just, you know, kind of a minor detail. So that's really the main sound. Something that's really important here is definitely this background noise. Now the whole idea behind this background noise is to create something rhythmic, almost like the kind of percussive almost, that kind of slides back and forth and adds motion to the sound. Uh, I like it to be really watery, so does calcium, because uh, you know when it has that watery texture mixed with the really hard digital texture, it creates a super cool effect and super cool vibe. So this is, uh, to be honest, the majority of what's going on here is just a lot of random crap just sliding around the spectrum. So this is the sound just the wavetable, just the acid wavetable. Pretty garbage, right? I have this LFO1 going right here on trigger. It's at like 1 16th triplets. Remember, we are in triplets. And uh, I'm, it's modulating the level and the wavetable position. After that, I have a band reject filter. And really, all I wanted to do with this band reject filter is uh, just use it for these peaks. I wanted these two peaks to move around right here. So you can see I have the resonance really high, have the width about midway, and the cutoff is getting modulated a lot. Now you can hear that kind of wateriness come into effect. It's because those peaks and that dip are sweeping around. After that, when we pop into the effects section, first off, I have an EQ, and this is going back and forth with this high pass filter, and this is going to really keep it like atonal. This is gonna get rid of those really tonal frequencies that have like a pitch down at the bottom. Now it's a lot harder to tell what like pitch I'm playing. It all generally kind of sounds like the same note, which is what we want. We don't want, we want this to be a very atonal sound. Have a little bit of soft clipping here and never mind, actually a lot of soft clipping here. To add a little bit of brightness and freshness, uh, we have some hyper dimension. You can see I'm just turning the mix up a little bit and then the mix up a little bit here is getting modulated with uh, this LFO one to keep there from being too much weird like stereo decay. Uh, I have some phaser, which the rate is all the way up and the depth and the frequency are pretty much in the middle. And what this does, this adds a really watery sound effect. Like if I turn this off, you can hear the difference. It adds a very stereo kind of watery sound effect. So if I just add that in there along with this, it just adds to like the wetness of the sound. Next up, I have a filter and I'm not actually using this filter as a filter. I feel like I'm using this filter a lot more like an EQ because you see I have a notch right here, which a notch is just a dip in the spectrum. It's just a big old dip right in the middle and I'm mixing it in. So basically this plugin is doing is basically finding a spot that I didn't like. It was like here or something like that and then dipping it down. That's really all I'm doing with this uh, filter right here. That's what it is visually because I'm just mixing in the notch. 
There was just a spot in there that was a little bit annoying. And then we wrap it up with a compressor. I actually have zero on the low band and the mid and high band are all normal, but I just brought it down. I brought down the threshold and brought up the release and just drove it through. And for the post-processing, I just have two things. I have the EQ, which is doing some pretty drastic stuff here. I have it dipping down all the lows, getting rid of a weird frequency here, and then doing this big boost. But after that, I can just throw on a sound goodizer. A lot of sound goodizing to just really make it a lot more powerful. And then I just turn it down to mix in with the original sound. Which both sounds are going through this little thing right here, which is just a side chain. If you're interested in what I did with the sub as just an extra thing, I just turned it on this kind of rounded square wave. I have this on off and it's on 16th triplets just doing this. It is also going through the side chain, but really I just routed it into the mixer and boosted the harmonics a little bit here. And that is really everything that goes into this sound. It's not as complex as a lot of people would think. Okay, that wraps up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button. If you liked it even more, hit the subscribe button because we're coming out with a lot of new tutorials and a lot of cool music production stuff. So thank you so much for sticking around to the end and I will see all of you in the next video. Happy producing.